into preach freedom. The means represent freedom. And the means supply freedom. That brings us to point number two. The misinterpretation of the freedom of Christians. And literally what they do is they cancel the freedom by the frivolity. They cancel the liberty by the license. And they cancel the assurance by the abuse of that liberty. And it comes in three areas. Number one, the flesh. Number two, the fruit. Number three, the family. Number one, the flesh. They cancel their liberty by indulging the flesh. Indulging the flesh. Number two, by ignoring the fruit. No fruit in their lives anymore. Oh, they say I'm free. They say I'm at liberty. So they indulge the flesh. I am free. So they ignore the fruit. I am free. They injure the family. Look at this, number one. They think freedom means freedom to indulge the flesh. Let's come to chapter 5 of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Do not use liberty as an opportunity to let go and indulge the flesh, an occasion for the flesh. And he tells us right in this chapter, look at verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. It says, those who say, we're free, we're free. And then they think that liberty means, liberation means, freedom means, indulge the flesh. He said, Watch them and be very careful. These are the works of the flesh. Then it says adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, and variance, and emulations, and wrath, and strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before. As I have also told you in time past. We're going to read the last part together now. That one, two, three, go. We're going to read it in unison. One, two, three, go. Now you read it very well. One, two, three. It says, this is say we're free. We're free to indulge the flesh. We're free to continue in the flesh. They which do such things, they're not free from hellfire. They're not free from condemnation. They're not free from judgment. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. They misinterpret freedom. And they think freedom means you can indulge the flesh. Look at Romans chapter 8, the flesh. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading here from verse 12 and verse 13. Romans chapter 12, chapter 8, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are not, we are debtors, not to the flesh, but to live after the flesh. Brethren, verse 13, for if ye, not sinners, brethren, if ye, those who have been saved by Christ, if ye, those who profess freedom in Christ, if ye live after the flesh, what will happen? You shall die. You'll die in sin and go to hell. Because you misinterpret freedom to mean we can indulge the flesh. Chapter 13 of Romans, verse 14. Romans chapter 13, I'm reading here from verse 14. Here it tells us about the flesh. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. 
Don't say, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. I can indulge the flesh. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. It tells us in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. I'm reading here from verse 8. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. Indulging the flesh. 6, 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap what? Corruption. You go back to that corruption again. And you go back into that captivity once again. It tells us in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 16. 1 John 2 verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So the people that were trying to turn liberty to life says, and they were abusing that liberty. They came and they said, we're free. We can indulge the flesh. For them, it will be hellfire if they die in that condition. What's the Lord telling us? If we're going to keep our freedom. Second Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 1. Having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. That's really liberty. Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And there are other people that tried to misinterpret our freedom, the freedom of Christians. Those who did it, number one, they said, you can indulge the flesh. Number two, other people said, you can ignore the fruit, fruit bearing. They said, you don't need any fruit. We're saved. We're saved by grace. Whether you have fruit or not, the fruit of repentance. Oh, they said, that's not necessary anymore. The fruit of righteousness. They said, that's not necessary anymore. We're saved. We're, sa we're saved. And we're at liberty. So don't look for any fruit. Uh, but look at that same Galatians chapter 5. They read only one verse of scripture. They do not read everything in the chapter. It tells us in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit. You're free. You must bear fruit. What kind of fruit? The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. You're not free from loving God with all your heart. You're not free from loving your wife. You're not free from loving your husband. You're not free from loving your neighbor as yourself. Freedom does not mean, no, I don't have to love anybody. I am free. I am free to hate. I'm free to fight. I'm free to do evil. No, you're not free. You must not ignore the fruit. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, Faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. I pray God will give you understanding. In John chapter 15, John chapter 15, you're free, but you cannot ignore the fruit. Free, but you cannot ignore fruit bearing. John chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true vine, and my father is the Osman man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, what happens? He taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, 
except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. He who abides in me, and keeps on enjoying my freedom and my liberation and liberty, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Verse 6, if a man abide not in me, and there's no fruit anymore, and is ignoring the fruit, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them them where into the fire and they are burnt look at verse 16 ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit you cannot interpret liberty liberation freedom to mean I can ignore the fruit. No, you cannot. He called you. He saved you. And he ordained you, put you in place that you might bear fruit and that your fruit shall remain and that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Give me a good amen there. See, there are people that they will say we're free. We're at liberty. Because we're at liberty, they indulge the flesh. Because we're at liberty, they ignore the fruit. Now they are dead. They don't have any fruit. In Jude, Jude, having only one chapter, I'm reading here from verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity. When the feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit we there is, without fruit, twice dead. That means they were dead in sins and trespasses, just dead. Then they came alive, quickened, they were born again. But as they now thought, we have liberty, we have freedom, we can do whatever, we can dodge the flesh, we can ignore the fruit. They went back to where they were before, they were dead again, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, reaching waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. We wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness and darkness forever. You see, those people that misinterpret freedom, liberty, and they indulge the flesh, and they ignore the fruit, it means that forever, if they don't repent, they will spend eternity in a hellfire. Number point, the third part of this, those who misinterpret, they injure the family. They injure the family. Come back to Galatians chapter 5. What does that mean? They injure the family. There are two kinds of families. Number one, the human family. Number two, the heavenly family. The human family, husband and wife, parents and children, human family. The heavenly family, those who are born from above, they have eternal life. They're the family of God. They're the children of God. These people who misinterpret our freedom, they say, I am free. They can hurt their own personal family. The wife says, I'm born again. My sins are forgiven. I'm going to heaven. Whatever I do, even if I injure my husband, even if I'm unfaithful to my husband, I am free. I'm born again. I'm not going to heaven because of I do this, I don't do that. I am free. The horseman too will say, I am free. Free to do what? Free to injure the family. Look at Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 26. It says, let us not be desirous of being glory, provoking one another, 
envying one another. You see the people that claim freedom, freedom, freedom. They don't understand your freedom starts where it will hurt your fellow man. Your freedom starts where it will hurt another person. You cannot carry freedom so far as to just be lawless. And then you hurt everybody and destroy the human family. You know, somebody comes to the family and meets another person's wife and he says, uh, let's do this together. And the fellow says, how can you do that? Uh, uh, are, you, are you afraid? Are you not free? Are you not at liberty? Christ has set us free. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't go here. Don't sit there. Don't stand there. Christ has set us free. That is to hurt and to injure the family, the human family. And there will be judgment. I said there will be judgment. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 9. It says in verse 9, Know ye not, free people, know ye not, those who say they are liberty, don't you know, know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither, fornicate, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Those who misuse and mess up, other people's daughters or mess up other people's wives. We're free. We're free. Don't you know you're injuring the human family? And it says, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. It tells us in Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at that again. Galatians chapter 5, that same chapter 5 that talks about liberty and about freedom. Chapter 5 verse 19. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. You injure the human family with your misinterpretation of we're free, we're free. Whatever happens, we're free. No, you are not free to do that. Fornicate, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. And then it says hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've often told you in time past, they which do such things on the basis of we're free, on the basis of we have liberty, on the basis of nobody can control me and control us. Don't sit there, don't stand there, don't touch that one, don't kiss that one, don't go there. Nobody can control me, I'm free. Uh -huh. Your freedom will lead you to hell. Freedom to hurt, to injure the family. It says, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you believe that? Then say amen if you believe. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 4. Freedom to injure the human family. Hebrews chapter 13.